Hey, how's it going? My name is Gabby. Welcome back to my channel and today I'm going to be starting a romance reading vlog. Today I'm going to be starting another romance reading vlog with some romances that I've been so excited about. Most of them are new releases, but one of them happens to be a backlist book of the month book from last year. And so which romance books am I going to be reading for this video, you might ask? I'm going to start with One Night on the Island by Josie Silver. This is the same author as One Day in December, which is a romance that I read a number of years ago that I really enjoyed. And I'm just so excited for this next book because this one has one of my favorite tropes which is when there's like two strangers that double book this same cottage so it's gonna be this like forced proximity situation I'm just I'm so excited and then we have count your lucky stars which this one is also a new release this is a third book in a romance series by Alexandria Bellafleur which this romance series has like launched itself to my top favorite romance series ever and this one is a female female romance that's following these two friends that are part of this group and this one is actually a second chance romance with these two Two girls they knew each other in high school and they had this like fling and now this is 11 years later when they meet again and then I have the sweetest remedy which this one is the book of the month pick from last September and this one is about this woman who travels to Nigeria for the funeral of a father that she never met while that is going on and she's discovering a bunch of new family members that she never knew about there's also a romance that happens in this book as well and then the last book that I'm gonna be reading for this video is love and other disasters which was a book of the month pick from January so this one's actually pretty recent and this is one that I'm so excited about because it's about a woman who signs up for this like chef's cooking show it's like a cooking competition show and then it's about how she starts to develop a romance with one of the other contestants which is a non-binary person named London and it just sounds like it's gonna be so cute and so much fun I love cooking shows so I'm so down and so yeah these are going to be the four romance books that I'm going to be reading for this video and I'm very excited about it However, before we do jump into the video, I just wanted to say a huge thank you to a new sponsor on this channel, which is BetterHelp. Is there something interfering with your happiness or something that's preventing you from reaching your goals? I know for me personally, I can get easily overwhelmed and very anxious with all the different things going on at life at any given time. BetterHelp will assess your needs and they'll match you with your very own licensed professional therapist. You can even start communicating within 48 hours. It's not a crisis line. It's not self-help. It's professional therapy done securely online. There is a broad range of expertise across BetterHelp's 20,000 plus therapist network, which may not be locally available in many areas. BetterHelp's service is available for people worldwide. You can log into your account anytime and send your therapist a message. You'll get timely and thoughtful responses. And something that I think is really cool is that you can schedule certain times to talk to your therapist on video or through phone calls so that you don't have to be sitting in a waiting room like you would do with traditional therapy because it's all done online. BetterHelp is committed to facilitating great therapeutic matches, so they make it easy and free to change your therapist if you need to. It's more affordable than traditional offline therapy, and they have financial aid available because BetterHelp wants you to start living a happier life today. So you can visit betterhelp.com slash Gabby Reads, that's better H-E-L-P, and join the over 1 million people taking charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional. And that's a special offer just for my channel viewers you can get 10% off your first month when you go to betterhelp.com slash Gabby reads link will be in the description thank you so much once again to BetterHelp for sponsoring today's video and now let's get into the romance books hey what's up how's it going sorry my hair looks totally wild right now but um I slept on it wet last night and it still is just kind of wet today it's like almost two o'clock in the afternoon but I wanted to let you know that last night I started one night on the island by Josie silver and this is one that after I just recently did a like try a chapter video with a bunch of romance books and after finishing that video I just immediately had the urge to want to pick this book up so I did yeah I got 67 pages of the way in last night so I'm not like too far into this book but I'm already just kind of I don't know I'm really enjoying it so far I love this trope in romance books because if you didn't know we're following this woman named Cleo and she's gonna be celebrating her 30th birthday 
very soon and she's kind of like not too stoked about that you know she's like very feeling uneasy about turning 30 and so her company is sending her to this little cottage on this like little island so that she can have some alone time and you know like bring in her birthday in peace by herself and then the cottage that she's supposed to be staying at gets like double booked and there's this other guy there he's from boston and he's also recently kind of going through it in like his marriage like he had this wife i don't it's unclear to me if they're still together right now or if they're just like having some issues but he also has two kids and he gets double booked to stay at the same cottage with her <laughs> and they're just kind of put in this situation where like they're probably gonna have to stay in this cottage together because there's literally no other vacant places to stay on this island and this boat doesn't come to like take them from this island until like the next week so there's literally like nowhere else for them to go so this is very much a situation where it's like forced close proximity which is one of my favorite tropes in a romance book and it already kind of has like this like hate to love energy to it it's not quite hate to love okay but it's like they're annoyed with each other and they're kind of like always arguing over who should be able to stay at the cottage and which one of them would like have to leave. I don't know, I feel like I'm just enjoying it so far. Like I feel like it's a really cute and lighthearted mood so far, but also like I'm kind of scared because from what I've heard from all of my friends that have read this and from reviews that I've seen is that this book gets unexpectedly really heavy and really sad throughout the book and it's really more like about these characters and like their growth as humans. I'm expecting it to go in that direction even though I'm not the most stoked about it. Like I just kind of want something light and fun right now. But yeah, that's the update. I think I'm gonna read more of this today. I do have some editing that I might have to do today that might prevent me from jumping in immediately. But yeah, very excited. I also wanted to show you, look what just came in the mail. My first ever hiking boots. Because um, if you didn't know, after my uh, Capricorn reading vlog, apparently, I just want to be out in nature now. Like apparently that's my calling in life is to go hiking. I know I'm so dramatic, but um, I decided to order a pair of hiking boots off Amazon and aren't these so cute like I don't know if they're gonna be like super high quality hiking boots but I tried them on today they fit perfect they have like a lot of grip on the bottom and I don't know they were cheap on Amazon they were only like $35 compared to some of the other hiking boots that I was you know trying to find on like REI or some of these other fancier websites yeah I'm not about to drop like $200 on hiking boots right now you know I want to give myself time to make sure it's something I enjoy before I invest a lot of money in it but like these are cute right like they're so cute they even kind of look like the boots that are like on the wild book cover you know it's just super fitting like adorable <laughs> It's a little bit later in the night and I wanted to let you know that I have still been reading One Night on the Island, kind of. I didn't read a ton today. I got up to page 117 um, earlier tonight. My sister and Obed made this really bomb like steak and rice bowl. It's like a carne asada meat with like avocado and onions and white rice and it was so freaking good and then after that we started watching Alice in Borderland on Netflix which we've been wanting to watch for a long time because everybody says it has major squid game vibes and we watched three episodes tonight and like holy shit it's already so good it does have a very similar premise to squid game so i do think if you enjoyed squid game you need to watch alice in borderland because it is very similar you know it's like deadly games it's about survival and it's it's a japanese show whereas i think squid game is korean but you know very very similar in vibes so i'm really glad 
that we're watching that currently loving it and yeah i don't know i was just reading a little bit right now in my bed but right now it just hit midnight and i don't know why i am just not in the physical reading mood right now like i cannot concentrate for the life of me and i just realized that this book actually isn't out yet because i was gonna like look at my library to see if they had the audiobook available or even on libro to see if i could get the audiobook but the audiobook is not even available yet because this book technically doesn't go on sale until next week so i'm like oh great so i think instead i'm going to download the audiobook for the sweetest remedy off of libro right now because that's another book that i'm hoping to get to during this video and so i figured why not just start with this one on audio. I checked in my- my library does have this one on audio, but I would be on hold for such a long time. Like, I don't think I would get it checked out to me in time for this video. And yeah, so I think I'm just gonna listen to this for the rest of the night, and then I'll update you in the morning with thoughts. Tinky! <gasps> What's up? How's it going? So last night I got 30% of the way through The Sweetest Remedy on audio, which puts me at about 90 pages in. And so far the story is okay. I'm feeling like so far the story is focusing on more of the family situation that's going on in this book and less on the romance. And so in this book we're following this woman that's named Hannah and right at the start of this book she finds out about her father's funeral. Like she's attending her father's funeral for the father that she like never really new and yeah it's kind of a you know tricky situation because the family like the other kids of her father don't really like her and they don't want her around because like, I guess they're gonna be reading the will of her father or something and I think the other kids have this like jealousy that she's gonna be included in that even though she was never really like a part of their lives and so I don't know it's mainly focusing on like that storyline for now and then there's also a very subtle romance that's happening in the background but yeah so far I'm feeling like it's fine and like <laughs> I don't know if it's just me right now or if I'm just like not in the mood for reading romance but I'm sorry that these updates have been so lackluster because even with this one like I'm enjoying this story but for some reason my brain is just having trouble focusing right now and I don't know if that's just because maybe I'm not in the mood for romance or if maybe that's because I'm like in this early stages of a reading slump like I don't know what's going on but either way I would like to finish one of these books today you know I'm thinking I might try to finish The Sweetest Remedy just because I have it on audio so I feel like I can get through this quicker and I am curious to see if the romance like steps it up towards the more of the middle of this book i just hope i'm not getting into a reading slump because that is the last thing that i need right now <laughs> got some breakfast going we got hash browns we got sausage we like to cut up we get the sausage patties and then we cut them up into like small little pieces and toss them in like garlic salt and, and butter, butter. And, and it's fantastic don't get it fucking twisted yeah <laughs> we okay. need butter <laughs> up in here so like it's common mistake this is how you get that beautiful yeah, that Char. crispiness, that crispiness mm. is the butter. And then Rachel also made this oatmeal, baked oats Look at that bowl. Shit. That's some white chocolate and raspberries. I know. Best combination known to mankind. White chocolate and raspberries are Cinnamon. fantastic. Mm. And then also, Rachel went to Starbucks this morning Starbucks. and got the drink that is like the favorite. This is the recommendation that I got from Olivia like a long time ago. It's like that cold... What TikTok is it? Drink. Yeah, it's a TikTok drink. It's the ice white mocha with the fucking. I like the blonde espresso, but it has like the cold foam on top. Sweet. That makes no, it it's fantastic. Vanilla sweet cream cold foam. Yeah, not vanilla. regular cold foam. Oh, it's vanilla <laughs> sweet cream. My bad. I'm gonna twist it. I didn't even know there's a difference, to be honest. But <laughs> also, Rach finally got her Taylor merch today. <gasps> that took forever to come. Like she literally I ordered, ordered this shit. October. <sighs> it's like worth it though, you know. Here's the front. Front. Okay. Red Taylor's version. Cute. Okay. Yes. The back. Oh. Oh. oh yeah. Stunning. And I like my hoodies to be, you know. Like large a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, and apparently this design is so intricate that it took fucking five fucking months. Yeah, five fucking months <laughs> so, to ship it. So here we are. <laughs> it's worth it though, you know? She's here. It's cute. I mean I still haven't gotten the merch that <laughs> I ordered, but you know, we're not gonna I'm not gonna talk about that. It says it's not gonna come until April now, so oh, that's that's cool. That's unfortunate for you. It is. I'm also just wearing my hiking boots. Yeah, you've been wearing them all day. I'm I just, don't understand it. I'm just wearing my or hiking inside. boots around the apartment because I want to like break them in and also see we you know, are how they feel. <laughs> it just feels right, you know. <laughs> i 
to your eyes I see we're out of time I guess no one's to blame Nobody crossed the line It's a little bit later in the night, but I wanted to let you know that I finished The Sweetest Remedy. I actually finished this a little while ago, like right after dinner. Sorry if I have kind of a lisp right now, but my retainer is being really annoying, so I took out my bottom retainer, so I might be talking strange. I think I'm gonna end up giving this one a three out of five. I was just kind of listening to this one on audio today, just while I was getting some other stuff done. I don't think I enjoyed this one quite as much as the previous book that I read from this author, which was called Ties That Tether. Um, this one just ended up being like a three out of five for me. You know, I thought it was just okay. I feel like even though this book is marketed as a romance, I feel like it's really, you know, this coming of age story for Hannah. To be honest, listening to it on audio was a little bit tricky at first, you know, because it took my brain so long before I realized that this story has multiple different points of view, but for some reason it's all read by the same narrator on the audiobook, so like, it was a little bit hard to follow the story at times because I was like, wait, what's happening? And then I would check back in the book and be like, oh, we're not even reading from Hannah's point of view right now. And I think that just goes to show how much this book is more of a contemporary, you know, like coming of age kind of story as opposed to a romance because in what romance book would you get the point of view of like the siblings, you know what I mean? Like that's just so random. I don't know, like I personally didn't think we needed the point of view of some of the siblings like I think it just kind of took me out of it you know and as far as the romance goes like it was cute but I just wasn't super invested in the romance but something that I did enjoy about this book is learning more about Nigeria and their culture because there was a lot of interesting things that I learned about this book and that I feel like I learned whenever I read a book from this author like I didn't know in Nigeria that it's common to wear more colors at funerals unless the person died young. Like there's a moment where they say like, oh, if the person died young, then we usually wear black to the funeral, but otherwise they wear, you know, a lot of color and it's more like a celebration of their life. And I just thought that that was really beautiful. And there were a few moments like this where I didn't realize something about the culture in Nigeria. And so I got to learn something. So I do appreciate this book for those reasons. I also do enjoy, for the most part, I enjoyed the story of like Hannah with her family and like the complicated relationships that she had with the siblings, you know, because there was obviously some tension there. And I don't know, I feel like maybe I did do this book a disservice by, you know, reading this when I'm starting to feel like I'm in a reading slump. But at the same time, like, I don't think my opinion about this book would have been any different had I read it at any other times. But yeah, I don't know. It was a three out of five. It was a perfectly fine time. But I kind of don't, I don't know what I want to read next because a part of me does just want to finish One Night on the Island and you know bust this one out but another part of me just kind of wants to start reading count your lucky stars because you know i do feel like i'm slightly in a reading slump right now and like i need something that's just gonna pick me up and i just know that this book is gonna hit i don't know i'm gonna read one of these tonight and then i'll check back in with you tomorrow <laughs> look at this sunset today it's beautiful Stunning.
just wanted to update you because it's been a whole ass minute, okay? It's been a day and I just haven't really been in the reading mood in like the last, you know, couple of days if I'm being honest. But I decided to have, you know, kind of cozy night. It's a Friday night and I lit some candles in my room and just kind of like set up all the lights and it's just a nice vibe in here. And I decided to start Count Your Lucky Stars and just really try to get into it and I'm now a hundred pages into it and I'm really enjoying it and I feel like this book is getting me out of my reading slump because it's just so freaking cute so far and something that I did know about this book going into it was that it was going to be this like almost like this second chance romance between these two girls because I guess they had known each other in high school 11 years ago. They kind of had like this week together when they were in high school and they haven't seen each other in freaking 11 years and so this is kind of like, you know, them getting a second chance at romance, which I will admit, second chance romances aren't my favorite romance tropes. Like I don't usually enjoy them if I'm being honest, but I've also never read a female female romance that's like a second chance romance, so maybe this one will be a winner for me. Also, oh my gosh, I what I did not realize about this book before starting it was that it was also going to involve another one of my favorite tropes, which is forced proximity, because these girls are kind of not forced, but like they end up being roommates, you know, right at the start of this book. And so, hell yes, that's one of my favorite romance tropes. I love when the couple like has to to be roommates or when there's just like this forced proximity situation like they're always having to be around each other against their will it's just great and also this book is just genuinely like so cute and so funny like there's already been a few funny moments i've been like highlighting with my highlighter and i still think margot is such a relatable character i talked about this a little bit in my try a chapter video that I did with this book but I feel like Margot is such a relatable character because she's talking about how she doesn't feel like she needs to be in a relationship to feel you know whole because a lot of her friends you know like she feels like she's always the fifth wheel with her group of friends and she feels like they're always trying to motivate her to like go and find her person and she doesn't feel like she needs to find a person to be you know a whole person like she's like I am a whole person and like yeah it would be nice to have someone but I don't need someone and she's just really relatable in like that sense I love that this book takes place in Seattle I love that there's still a lot of st astrology involved in this book too like the other books in the series there's just so much that I love about these books and this writer Alexandria Bellafleur like she just gets me you know like I there's just something about her romances that I just truly love and I really connect with her writing. And so yeah, I'm loving it. I'm planning on reading hopefully a little bit more tonight. I mean, it's about 11.30 right now, so hopefully I can stay up for at least another hour reading and I will let you know more of my thoughts tomorrow morning. But like, ugh, I'm loving it and I'm so glad that this book is taking me out of my reading slump. It, it feels so good to have just sat here and read 100 pages. Like, it's been a long time since I've been able to do that without the help of an audiobook, so that's amazing. Good morning! It is the next morning, and last night I got up to page, like, I think, like, 212 of the book Counter Lucky Stars that I'm reading, and I'm still really enjoying it. Also, this book is a lot more steamy than I was anticipating. Like, oh my god, those sex scenes are freaking erotic. Like, wow. Which I should have known, honestly, because I do remember the other two books now that I'm thinking about it. I do remember them being pretty erotic, too. So, like, I shouldn't be that surprised by that. But yeah, this morning, I went to the gym. I only went for about 30 minutes, but still, like, I'm glad that I got out of the house and finally went to the gym. I just did a little grocery shopping. I just wanted to get stuff to make margaritas because I just hit freaking 70 K subscribers and I'm like holy shit and so I just want a margarita like I decided that when I hit 70k I'm gonna have a margarita so I just bought some groceries to make margaritas and now I'm heading home because in about like an hour and a half or so um my mom is gonna come over and we're going out to the movies because one of my local like small movie theaters is playing drive my car which is that Japanese movie that's nominated for best picture so we're gonna go and see that and yeah it should be a pretty awesome chill Saturday quote in the bathroom of the movie theater. How cute is that? Uh, uh, Adorable. Yes. We're here. Let's hope it's good. <laughs> hello, hello. Um, we just got home from going and seeing Drive My Car, which, um, you know, this is a movie that we've all been wanting to see because it's nominated for Best Picture which is so exciting, but we also probably would have seen it anyways just because it's this Japanese movie that we've all been very interested in. And it was so good. Like, 
I will warn you, this movie is three hours long, you know, so it was a long movie, but I personally, I didn't feel the runtime that much because I was like super invested in the story. I really liked all of the characters and I don't know, I just felt like it was one of those really like beautiful, quiet movies where there's just like a little bit of drama that's going on and like, you know, characters that are dealing with a lot of different things going on in their lives. But, like, I don't know, I really enjoyed it and it's definitely gonna be a movie that I still think about a lot because even on the drive home, like we were talking about so many different things in the movie and like, what did you think of that? And like, you know, it it's definitely a movie where you just kind of want to talk about it after you see it, which is amazing, you know, because that's like my favorite kind of movie is when, you know, it's hard to stop thinking about it after you watch it because that's kind of like the whole point, right? <laughs> Hello, I'm back in bed. It's already midnight and I haven't read anything tonight. I've just had kind of a busy day today, you know? So I went to the gym, I went to the movies with my mom and my sister, and then we came home, we made dinner. I had to edit this video that I wanted to get up in time for Valentine's Day, so I wanted to get it up early for Patreon by tomorrow. So I had to finish editing that, it took me a couple of hours. And then I also had to film an ASMR video tonight. <laughs> and there was just a lot of things going on today that I didn't think were gonna come up today, so I haven't read anything. But I think, you know, as I said, it's midnight right now. I don't really have anything going on tomorrow besides the Super Bowl. Like, I'm going over to my family's house for the Super Bowl. So I think I might try to stay up and finish reading this now. <laughs> How's it going? It's the next morning and I'm stoked to let you know that I did finish Count Your Lucky Stars last night. I ended up staying up a little bit late until about like 1.30ish finishing this book, but I did finish it. And I feel like I'm gonna end up giving this one four out of five stars, which kind of sounds like it might be disappointing for me, you know, just because I, I, I anticipated giving this an easy five out of five and loving it so much. But you know, I do think at the end of the day why this book ended up being a four star for me instead of a five star is just because of the trope. You know, as I said, I'm not a big fan of second chance romance, especially when it's a situation where, you know, the reason why they never really worked out in the first time was because of like a miscommunication issue when they were younger. It's just one of my least favorite romance tropes. And unfortunately, even with Alexandria Bellafleur's incredible romance writing, it was wasn't able to make me look past my issues that I had with this trope and just how much I'm, I don't really enjoy this trope very much. But I mean, with that being said, I still give this four out of five stars. Like I still really enjoyed this. I loved both Margot and Olivia's characters. I just thought that they were so freaking cute and so perfect for each other. I loved Olivia's relationship with her dad and how she's just always worrying about him and concerned about him. I just feel like I would be exactly the same way in her situation. Also just loved like in this book, they had so many cute moments like with their friends and I think this was like the perfect conclusion for this like romance series to see the different groups of friends like there was a lot of things happening in this book for all the different groups of friends that we've seen in the previous two books so that was also just like <laughs> so heartwarming to see the other characters that I know and love from the other books. I also just absolutely adore um, Margot and Elle's friendship throughout this book. Elle is the first girl from Written in the Stars and they're the ones who like have the company together like the astrology company together and so I just adored their friendship throughout this book. These books are a little bit more steamy than their covers might imply, okay? Like there are a lot of very graphic sex scenes in these books, which is something I guess I always forget about whenever I'm thinking about these book series because like steamy romance and steamy erotic sex scenes are something that I don't need in a romance to enjoy it, but I know some people do. So like if that's you, then this series is definitely steamy and erotic and worth checking out. But either way, I think these characters are just so cute, so adorable. And if you're wondering, if you're just curious, the first book in this series is written in the stars and then there's hang the moon and then count your lucky stars is the conclusion to this series and like don't you just love the way that these covers like match and they all have like really cute ombre beautiful covers and like uh wow now that is what we call a stunning sunset wow wow i'm like oh wilson oh, 
Hey, what's up? How's it going? So it's been a couple of days since I've last updated this romance reading vlog and I haven't read another single page of One Night on the Island and I think I'm deciding to set this one aside for now. And that's not to say that I'm not enjoying it because I am enjoying it. I just feel like right now is not the time for this book for some reason. I'm just not able to focus on this the way that I want to focus on it. And the audiobook became available at my library today, so I just put the audiobook on hold so that hopefully the audiobook can help me get through this whenever I do eventually get to it. But I am currently reading Love and Other Disasters. This one, my audiobook finally just came through today from my library. Just within this last little bit here, I've already gotten about a hundred pages into this book. Yeah, this one is about this woman named Dahlia and she's going on to this, you know, cooking show. It's like this chef's cooking show and she's going to be competing on this show. And then the love interest London in this book is non-binary, which is so freaking cool. Like, I feel like this is the first, you know, like mainstream adult romance, I think, that I've read that features a non-binary character as like the main love interest. So this book gets bonus points just for that, like just for that unique representation. Like I love to see that. But yeah, so far, um, I don't know, like they're just kind of competing against each other on this, you know, cooking show. I love the idea of a cooking show in a romance novel. I think that's so freaking cute. And I don't think I've ever seen that before. Like I've seen a bunch of other different kinds of like reality shows, like dating shows and stuff, but I've never seen like a reality cooking competition show and I love cooking competition shows like so freaking much but if I did have anything negative to say right now at this point in time I would just say that I feel like the chapters are a little bit too long for what I usually enjoy I mean I'm a hundred pages in and I'm only about eight chapters in and the chapters like the last chapter that I just read was like 26 or 30 pages or something like that and I was like god damn like the chapters don't need to be that long and also random nitpick but <laughs> this book is written in third person point of view and I don't know why sometimes for with romance books like I prefer for them to be written in first person point of view because I like being inside of the head of the you know characters that are involved in this romance but I feel a little disconnected whenever romances are written in third person point of view because I feel like I'm you know viewing the relationship from outside of the relationship as opposed to like feeling what the main characters are feeling if that makes any sense and so I don't love when romances are written in third person point of view but it's a little bit slow so I'm hoping it picks up but um, as of right now it's just about 11 o'clock at night so I think I'm just gonna like turn out all the lights and just continue to listen to this on audio tonight and play some games on my phone and then hopefully tomorrow I can finish this because I'm doing some reading sprints with Savannah tomorrow over on her channel and it's gonna be like cute Valentine's Day themed kind of sprints so that'll be the perfect opportunity for me to finish this one and then also look at what just came in the mail today like freaking weather girl are you kidding me I just wanted to show you that it's in my hands and it exists this is another one where I might wait until I have the audiobook available. Like, I'm not too sure yet. But if I do decide to wait for it, I think I have like 11 weeks until I can get the audiobook. At least that's what it's saying for now. So I might not get to this one for a little bit. But yeah, anyways, I'm going to jump back in and then I'll let you know how I'm feeling about this one in the morning. <laughs> What's up? Good morning. It is the next morning. And last night I got all the way up to page 238 of you know, love and other disasters. I think I'm about like 66% of the way through the audiobook last night. I actually was able to listen to quite a bit of the audiobook last night. I don't know, I have mixed feelings about this book and where it's going so far. Like, I just feel like I'm kind of bored or like I just kind of want more from this story. And even for this story, you know, being about you know, a chef's kind of show. Like, you think it would be a little bit more exciting? And I don't know, I've kind of hit this point in the story where the plot isn't really moving a whole lot. It's just a lot of, like, sex scenes, a lot of sex scenes going on, and it's like, well, that's fine. That's usually never the reason why I get invested in a romance story, like, as someone who's, uh, you know, asexual. Um, I just don't usually care a ton about sex scenes and especially when it's just feeling like they're just back to back to back and so i don't know like i'm curious i'm definitely still planning to finish this because i'm not disliking it i'm just kind of like waiting to see what what'll happen and i'm just kind of bored currently what's up how's it going it's a little bit later in the night now we're about 15 minutes out from starting reading sprints um but yeah my sister did my hair and my makeup today and i'm just like obsessed i filmed so much today like i got so much filming done i've been editing a 
little bit this afternoon. But yeah, as soon as reading sprints start back up, I'm going to be hopefully finishing Love and Other Disasters, which I'm so excited to be finishing this book. And I'm so excited to do some reading sprints with Savannah. I think it's gonna be so much fun. I've been live with my friend Savannah doing reading sprints for the last like, you know, two and a half hours or so and I finished Love and Other Disasters. I think I am going to end up giving this three stars because there are some things that I did enjoy about this book and then there were some things that were like not my favorite about this book. You know, I definitely loved seeing a non-binary character in like a mainstream romance like this and I do think that that's super important representation to see in romance novels and I hope you know after this book is you know so popular and such a success I hope that we do see in the future more non-binary characters like this in future romance books and I really appreciate the different conversations that London brought to the table as far as you know being a non-binary character and person on you know this huge cooking show and like what that means for them and like their complicated relationship that they had with their parents. I just thought it was all very well done. I also really did love the cooking show aspect of this book. Like I thought that made it so much fun because like I do love watching cooking shows. Like they're just some of the most fun shits. And so I did enjoy that in this as well. But I guess part of my issue with this book is that I don't know, I feel like sometimes the romance, like sometimes it felt so cute and then sometimes I was just kind of like, okay, like I was just like skimming, like there was a lot of sex scenes towards the middle of this book where it just kind of felt like the plot wasn't really moving very much. It's not like I didn't enjoy this book because I definitely did, but it's not like a new favorite at the same time, you know? It was just fine. So that is a wrap on this romance reading vlog. I read three and a half <laughs> books for this reading vlog. Yeah, I did not finish One Night on the Island, but that is not to say that I'm not enjoying it. I've just decided to put it on pause for now because I'm gonna be waiting for the audiobook for this one because I feel like that'll be like the best way for me to consume this book. So it's on pause. I got like 117 pages in, but I'm gonna wait for the audiobook, which is something that I rarely do to be honest, but I just feel like I need it to help me get through this book right now because I can't focus otherwise. I don't know what's wrong with my brain right now. I did end up finishing these three books for this video. I think my favorite book that I read during this video was Count Your Lucky Stars, which, you know, was kind of expected. I expected to love this one and I did love and adore this book so much. And then these two, I ended up feeling similar about these in that I had some things that I loved about them, some things that I didn't. I don't know, they were both kind of like middle of the road, you know, kind of three star, three to 3.5 star romances for me. And so yeah, that's a wrap on this romance reading vlog. Let me know if you've read any of these four books, what your thoughts are on them. Thank you so much for watching and for hanging out and I hope you have a good rest of your day and I'll see you very soon with another video. Bye!